Welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alan Kennedy and I'm a former chartered accountant having sold my council practice a couple of years ago. And I'm just going to help small businesses guide, uh, help guide small businesses through the process of choosing an accountant. I visited my dentist the other day and uh, said to him, uh, do you know why I like you? No, he said, why? He said, I said, you cause me very little pain and clearly you care about my well-being. But I then said to him, does that make you a good dentist? And he said, no, probably not. I said, well, how do you tell a good dentist? To which he replied, well, I could tell you by looking at another dentist's fillings, and then you get a pretty good feel for whether they're a good dentist. The trouble with that is this just a limit to how much I can see of my fillings and or other people's fillings. And so it's very difficult for me to choose a good dentist. The same is true of people who choose accountants is very often they don't have enough information. So the purpose of this video is to help just help you guide you through some uh, a difficult but important business choice. Uh, so here goes. Right. So what should you ask when you're in chatting to an accountant? Well, question number one is, uh, is not to ask the accountant at all, to ask friends and family. You'll get a pretty good idea from other business people who've been around for a while uh, as to who good accountants are and who they aren't. It's not a foolproof method because the friends and family might not understand um, uh, the issues involved, or indeed you could ask other businesses. Uh, uh, but if you knew friends and family who are accountants, one of the best ways of finding an accountant is ask another accountant, who do you rate as good locally for small businesses? Uh, so if you know another accountant, and ask them and they should be able to point you in the right direction. Uh, question number two is, are they qualified? Um, it's quite dangerous to employ an unqualified accountant because you have no real sanctions over them if they mess up. Also, uh, there is a risk that their money laundering regulation is done by HMRC, which means HMRC has the right to come in and look at their files, uh, which they don't for most accountants, uh, except under certain very specified criminal uh, conditions. Um, um, probably question number three is, are they familiar with it, your software? So ask them how many clients they have, for example, with Xero. Uh, do they love spreadsheets? Do they like QuickBooks Online? Do they still support Sage Desktop? Um, my personal preference is I might prefer Xero to QuickBooks Online, and I desperately hate Sage Desktop, but that's just a personal preference. If your accountant loves Sage Desktop, I would suggest he's a bit out of date. Uh, the other question you can ask them is, do they use invoice processing software? Because that will show they're quite up to date. Packages like Dext are very good. Um, also, Xero has its own. Uh, I'm a bit out of date with those now, but uh, that's a good question to ask. So question number three is, how big is their firm? When I used to give consultancy to, well, I still do give consultancy to county firms, but when I used to do it a lot more than I do now, um, uh, we used to do inter-firm comparisons. And the average partner in the average firm of chartered accountants would have had um, 300 clients, which means on average, they can spend somewhere between three and four hours per client per annum. So if they've got another large client who takes up a lot of their time, it means that you're not going to be speaking to the partner and you might be speaking to the staff and the staff might be very good or attentively, they might just want to get the job done because that's what they're targeted to do and not really care about your business. So uh, a good question to ask is how do, you, how do they manage that problem? Okay, then I would probably ask the accountant about tax planning tips. Uh, be specific, give me some examples of tax planning tips you've got given over the last week and you'll get a feel for whether they're proactive in tax planning, whether they hesitate. Um, uh, I would ask them about what their views are on incorporation uh, and before you do that, read up on an article on it so you can see the fours and against incorporation. Nowadays, it's a lot less clear cut than it was, say, two, four or five years ago before they introduced the dividend tax. Um, so it should be quite a complex discussion and a bit of feel from the accountants to whether that's the case or not. Um, do they have experience of your industry? Um, oh, when it comes to incorporation, one good tax planning tip, which a lot of accountants miss, is if you're coming up to that registration threshold, um, you can start the clock re-ticking by incorporating very often. Um, it's not quite as simple as that, but in general terms, you can. 
so if you're coming up to the back registration threshold, that might be a useful discussion to have. Uh, do they have experience of your industry? Sometimes industry present, industries present specific problems. Uh, there may be tax deduction in the entertainment industry. Uh, that, uh, if you're using overseas entertainers, there might be, if you're a solicitor, audit rules they have to comply with or accountants report rules. And having experience is probably quite a good big plus. Uh, do they network? If they sit there and hide in their offices, that's probably not a good sign. You want people who are used to being open-minded and dealing with other businesses and who are keen to expand. Uh, and then probably linked to the side of the firm, what do you do when the boss is off sick? Because if you're dealing with a sole one-man band practitioner and they go off sick and you need something done urgently, you've got a bit of a problem. So just ask them that question. And then lastly, I would say, does your accountant work for the revenue? Uh, a good question you can ask is, how much can I charge for my use of home or office? If they come up with the revenue scale rates, then you might want to avoid them, uh, because I prefer based on actual expenditure. Uh, uh, sorry, that wasn't last list. The last thing you probably ought to ask is how much? But actually, that's not as important to me as the other factors, because if your accountant messes up, he, he's very expensive. If he doesn't mess up and does the job properly, then he can save you a lot of money and be very cheap. Uh, but if two are providing roughly the same quality of service, then you obviously want, don't want to spend too much on one or the other. I would also say don't go too cheap, because if you cut them down to the bone, there is a risk they won't feel enthusiastic about doing your work. OK, lovely. So that's me, Alan Kennedy. I do hope you find the right accountant for you. Uh, if not, do give me a ring because I know lots of good accountants. Thank you.